Our next check is going to be for the allowable axial force. In this, and for this, we're going to check the buckling capacity of the wall as a masonry column. There is no reinforcing bar to transfer moment from the masonry walls to the anchor beam or foundation. So we will take this connection to be pin-pin because no, um, no moment is being transferred, right? So there's no, it's not going to be a fixed connection. Likely there will be some moment transferred in reality because, um, because they're, they are going to be grouted or, or kind of cold jointed together during the construction process. But we'll take this case as um, being a pin to pin connection, giving us an effective length factor of K equals one, allowing our effective length uh, HE to be KH or just H. And we'll move forward using that value. And the overarching equation for this check is uh, equation 8-15. P has to be less than uh, or equal to a one quarter PE, where P is the value of P wall, the force on the masonry column, and PE is the uh, Euler buckling capacity calculated in uh, equation 8-19, which I've um, shown here below for you. And I won't read out loud because it's a long equation, but I will say there are a few new variables in this equation. So we're going to have to define a few new terms, EM, IN, and E. EM is the elastic modulus of the masonry, which is a function of the compressive strength, F prime M. Makes sense. Uh, a stronger uh, material is going to have a, a different uh, elastic modulus than a weaker material. It's going to be based on its, um, some empirical value based on its, its strength. So section 4.2.2.2.1 gives an EM value of 900 times F prime M for concrete masonry, which we will use. IN, as I discussed a bit before, is the moment of inertia of the second moment of inertia of the net cross-sectional area. Um, IN for a rectangular cross-section in this case is going to be our BD cubed over 12. And we'll calculate two of these, um, one for each axis. So IX and IY. IX will be the strong axis uh, moment of inertia and IY will be the weak axis moment of inertia. This also warrants us calculating an R our radius of gyration, Rx and Ry, for strong and weak axes. So we can check them both for buckling. It is worth noting that there is partial support of the weak axis through the ramp fill and in situ native soil. However, we will take our usual approach of assuming this does not help, and we will revisit the calculations later if this check is not passing. So I've drawn out all these equations for you, and you can see what, um, you know, in section, the ramp wall, in a plan view, you would see what a weak axis buckling would look like. In an elevation view, you could see where strong axis buckling would be like. And finally, E is the eccentricity of the load. This is the distance from the centroid of the load to the centroid of the section. There will always be an EX and EY value for the strong and weak axis. And in order to find eccentricity, we first need to find the center of gravity of the wall section. Um, this involves finding X bar and Y bar values weighted by area. So I can go through a, a quick example here. I've shown um, all of the, I've written out all the equations. We have our area one, two, and three for each uh, wall section. We're going to have a Y1, Y2, and Y3, which is the difference from our difference from our arbitrary uh, coordinate plane uh, start of zero, zero to the centroid of that section. And in order to find our Y bar or our distance to the centroid of the combined um, composite shape, we will do our weighted area, so A1, Y1, plus A2, Y2, plus A3, Y3, all over the sum of the areas. And we can do the same thing to find an X bar, and our centroid of the composite section is going to be our X bar and our Y bar. And then our eccentricities are going to be uh, based on this value. So we can assume the load acts at half the anchor height and is evenly distributed along um, the 30 centimeters of wall bearing on the anchor. So the strong axis eccentricity is going to be Y bar minus half the anchor height, as you can see here. And the weak axis eccentricity depends on the wall thickness and will be X bar minus 15 centimeters at the center of the minimum bearing. Using this information, we can calculate PE for the strong and weak axes and compare this to our P wall value using equation 8-15. Make sure to keep units straight.